Rub up your engines! This is a brand new CX-90. They went to an inline straight six cylinder. They wanted to make an SUV that has plenty of low end grunt, smooth running, but still gets good gas mileage. This is a fancy model, the inline six, and it has a mild hybrid system. It's a boost system to give it more horsepower. And it's got plenty of horsepower. 340 to be exact. Now we can't see it because it's got the stupid beauty cover on it. So the beauty cover's going away. I won't throw it because it's a new car. I'll gently place it on the ground. And here is the monster behind it. It's turbocharged. It is an inline six. It can go great for rear wheel drive. Oh, this is all wheel drive. It does all four wheels. You can't really fit an inline transverse if you got a front wheel drive. So they decided, hey, we got plenty of room. And they went rear wheel drive or all wheel drive with the six cylinder engine. As you can see, the back's way down here. It won't fit sideways. Now, those of you who are BMW fans generally love the smoothness of the BMW six cylinder engines. Now this guy had a BMW and he loved driving it until it got about 60,000 miles and turned into an endless money pit. Not the engine, but the rest of the car. <laughs> BMW still makes pretty good engines. It's all the electronics and plastic crap that fall apart on, which is why I tell people not to buy them. This is another story. As you can see on the door, this baby was made in Japan by Japanese. That's what you want. And check the interior. I mean, it's beautiful. White, black stripe, chrome. Look at all the space in the back. And I mean space. Look at this. There's another row of seats too. They got it down. They're bringing their dog with them. But there is all kinds of space this thing you can see. It's beautifully appointed. It's got a really nice armrest for the second row of seats. And hey, this thing can carry an awful lot of stuff. It's a big vehicle. Yet driving it over here, they got 31 miles a gallon. No, I'm lying. They got 30.9 miles a gallon. Big 300 plus horsepower engine. Yet it's still got that kind of gas mileage. And this is an EPA rated gas mileage. This is actual gas mileage driving on the highway. Start it up. Now, if you know anything about Mazda, is they got a big relationship going with Toyota. So not only are they beautiful cars with beautiful colors, which they're known for. Mazda really has a thing for their paint and paint colors. This thing's beautiful. And the styling too. First they made the styling and their cars were okay, but now with their Toyota links, some of these are actually better than the Toyotas. Truthfully driving this thing around, it feels like my wife's old Toyota Crossover, which was also a six cylinder inline, and she still wants that car back. Well, the paint faded, the leather seats cracked, so we got rid of it, but it was still running fine. Let's take it for a spin and I'll show you. Of course, you know it's gonna start up. And the first thing you're gonna see is, look at the phenomenal backup camera. Wide angle view and there's the matrix, there's my trunk motorcycle. As you back up, everything moves. If you run into something, it's your own fault for being stupid. You don't notice anything. It's so smooth. Six cylinder engines idle great. But when you step on the gas, they start to take off. We're gonna wait till we get to the drag strip for that. But it's high enough up in the air, not too high, but high enough. You're not gonna have problems with water. It's got all the modern stuff like this. Heads up display, there's a speedometer. And of course, being a modern day Mazda, handles like a dream. You wouldn't think you're driving something as big as this thing actually is. And the fact that they got 30.9 miles a gallon driving it over, it tells you, hey, this is no gas hog yet. It's got a tremendous amount of power. And it's power you can use. You don't have to wait for the turbo to spool up. It does have a turbo, but it also has, look at that. It also has mild hybrid to give it a boost. So you got the hybrid boost and the turbo boost. So this thing does not lag. Your acceleration is real acceleration from the get go. Not, oh, you gotta wait till it starts winding up. It's a pretty well designed vehicle. It does have the start stop, which I don't like, but then again, it's hybrid. So it doesn't really bother a hybrid much. You're not wearing the starter out cause it uses the hybrid to start it up. Let's see what it does at the drag strip. Here we go. Smooth. Look at that. Say you're going down the road, you got to pass somebody. We'll floor it. Look how fast the speedometer gets going. It is definitely a non leg vehicle. It does not have leg. You want to go? Step on the gas and it goes. So even though it's starting to run a little low on gas now, check it out. It's still got 100 miles left. 
before it'll run out of gas. There is no range anxiety with this baby. <laughs> you can go long distances very comfortably. These seats are phenomenally comfortable. And how does it handle the curves? We're about to find out. It says it's supposed to go 20, we're going 55. Check it out. Handles like a dream. No problem taking the 20 curve. None. Hugs the road. Being a Mazda, I do have to say, zoom, zoom, indeed. The Mazda's going for a certain type of clientele here. This guy had, had European cars. He liked driving them, but he hated the maintenance. His friends, Mercedes, BMWs, he hates that maintenance. He decided to try a Mazda, and so far he said he's happy as can be. You can see it's instant acceleration with the combination of the turbocharger and the hybrid boost. This baby gets up and goes without emptying your wallet i will give you one warning you want to get the full power out of this you got to run it on premium gas because of its design if you get the non-s version it'll run on regular gas perfectly fine there's no difference in the engine between s and the plain version they're the same exact engine so if you're not opting for racehorse crazy well what the heck you can buy the regular version and run it on gasoline and save a lot of money when you fill it up and here we go on the other side of the airport Well, we're at the speed limit already. <laughs> that didn't take long. <laughs> it's got a nice screen that's below the hood, so it doesn't block anything while you're driving. And I do have to say, like I said before, I like the heads up. The heads up is pretty good here. I can see the speed limit. I can see how fast I'm going to compare it to the speed limit here. Now, for those of you who are technically challenged, realize it gives you the speed limit with the speed limit sign only in areas where it's supported. You get in the middle of nowhere, they don't broadcast it, so you won't get, you'll only get yours. I tried it in Death Valley and it didn't do anything <laughs> when I ran into Ramp 4. It wouldn't work there, of course. There's nothing there. You don't even have cell phone service in most of Death Valley. And we're coming up on a stop sign. So you'll see something interesting in a second, probably. Here we go. We're coming up to the stop sign and there it's got the stop sign and puts the stop sign here warning you that yes indeed if you're not looking there is a stop sign you're supposed to stop for All extremely smooth riding car as my rear end tells me I thought it felt cool it's got air conditioned seats too the air conditioning's on does both sides driver and passenger and as we turn it off yes it has an actual eight speed automatic transmission this is not a cvt crapper this is an actual eight speed and it performs excellently this has got all the bells and whistles you can cancel the road safety warning traction control it's got everything electric auto hold all kinds of hvac controls pretty well thought out car what do i think of it well it's got one major flaw it costs sixty one thousand nine hundred dollars and i'm a cheapskate right i'll wait till they get used once on the market because i'm a cheapskate but considering what the average car costs forty six to fifty thousand dollars this is not an average car it is a luxury suv and if you ask me, their competition against the Europeans, this will eat them alive. If you remember, back in the day when Lexus first made the 400 series V8 engine, right? The second year they sold those cars in the United States. They outsold BMW, Mercedes, Audi, Porsche, all put together. As a luxury SUV, as far as I'm concerned, this kicks the Europeans' rear ends. I know how these Mazdas tend to last especially since they've had this deal going with Toyota. This isn't going to fall apart like his BMW did at 60,000 miles. I do not see that happening, and I can feel the six-cylinder engine. It is under stress. It's not going to wear out because it's too small of an engine. 10% larger than most of them. It's bigger than three liters, right? They wanted smoothness, they wanted power, and they came out with a pretty good package. As far as I can see, it's a brand new model. Who knows? Maybe I'll look like a fool and they'll fall apart, but I kind of doubt it. <laughs> not after driving this thing, feeling it, and doing research on all the technology of what Mazda's been doing with Skyactiv technology. Very interesting car. If you got $61,900 to throw out. So I'll put the beauty cover back on, but I think it's stupid. Why would anybody not want to look at this beautiful engine? It's beyond me. At least this one has knobs to hold it in. <laughs> For the knob heads that designed them. <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.